Welcome back everyone, this is Dr. Gonstein, and here we are again for an RStudio demo for lecture number 15. In lecture 15, we talked about regression discontinuity, and in this demo, I'm just going to show you how to implement it in R. So first, uh, go ahead and install this uh, new package and let R know what libraries you need, and then import the data. We'll use wage RD data. So I'm not necessarily going to talk through all of the intuition of regression discontinuity that was in the lecture. I really want to focus on how to implement it in R. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to run two examples. The two examples are both going to be based on two different scenarios, kind of scenarios that are, are built into this data set. Um, so the first example is we want to measure the impact of an unconditional cash transfer on study time. The idea here is, um, or the scenario here is that, uh, assume that the government is implementing a program where they give, uh, uh, they unconditionally give a lump sum of money to individuals that make below $30 an hour in their wages. And then we want to measure, does this unconditional cash transfer, does it have any impact on how much time that children can spend studying? And the idea here is, is that if we provide some financial support to low-income earners, uh, that might take the financial stress off the family and might help free up more time for children to study. This is actually a fairly common thing uh, to look at in a lot of developing countries uh, where governments might use cash transfers to create incentives for parents to send children to school or to help relieve financial pressure to help um, avoid households from using child labor. So it's a fairly interesting question, uh, not an unlikely question. So when we're using regression discontinuity, the first thing I like to do is I like to graph, um, I like to produce a scatter plot um, with the outcome variable, which in this case is going to be study time, and the running variable or the eligibility uh, variable. So we know from regression discontinuity that we can only use that method when there's some eligibility criteria defined on some continuous variable. Uh, that continuous variable, it goes by different names. I'll call it a running, the running variable here today. Um, in this case, it's wage. Wage is a continuous variable. Um, individuals are eligible for the program if they have $30 or less per hour in wages. And so there's an eligibility criteria defined on that continuous variable. So the running variable is wages. So let's go ahead and just do a scatter plot. I like to produce a scatter plot when I'm looking at regression discontinuity for two reasons. Uh, one reason is it's nice to look to see if there's any just visual uh, reason to think that there's a discontinuity at the eligibility point. So in this case, the eligibility point is at 30. So those who have less than $30 an hour are eligible for the program, and those with, $30, with more than $30 are not eligible. So I'll just look here at that $30 per hour wage, and you can, I think I can see a discontinuity here. It looks as if the, the cluster of data points kind of shifts upwards a little bit at that $30 per hour wage. And so that's kind of encouraging. It, it looks like there might be a discontinuity there, which is encouraging because it might indicate that this method um, will be helpful in this context. Okay, the other reason I like to produce a scatter plot is because we can get an idea for the general relationship between the running variable wage and the outcome variable study time. If we think that in general it's linear, then that will influence how we set up our model later. If we think it might be, it might have some nonlinear relationship, then we can we can we can use that later when we implement our regression discontinuity model. So here, it looks like even without the shift at thirty dollars per hour, that there might be a nonlinear relationship here in study time. Uh, and so we might consider using a squared term later when we, when we run our regression model. Okay, so there we go. That's a good first step. Second step, we need to create a variable that actually defines that eligibility criteria. So we want a dummy variable that equals 1 for those that are eligible and 0 for those otherwise. I'm going to call this variable E1. And I want that variable to be inside the wages data set. So, so I'm going to run this line of code to do that. Uh, I'm using the if else command. So basically, if wages is less than or equal to 30, then E1 will equal 1. And if not, then E1 will equal 0. That's what that line of code does. So let's just run that. We've created a new variable. I'll just show you E1. So here it is. That just, it's a binary variable indicating eligibility. 
Okay, the next thing we got to do is we need to determine if we have uh, sharp or fuzzy regression discontinuity. Um, sharp regression discontinuity is when eligibility perfectly predicts the reception of the intervention. And fuzzy regression discontinuity is when eligibility does not perfectly predict reception, um, you know, whether or not someone will receive the intervention. And so we can do this pretty easily just by producing a table. We're just going to do a two by two table um, using the UCT unconditional cash transfer variable and the E1 or eligibility variable. And so uh, we'll do that and we'll get to see if there is um, perfect compliance or not. Okay, we can see here that everyone who's who, everyone who's not eligible uh, does not receive the unconditional cash transfer and everyone who is eligible does receive the unconditional cash transfer uh, there's no imperfect compliance so this is an example of sharp regression discontinuity okay now when we're using regression discontinuity we need to try to validate the assumptions so for assumption number one what we want to do is we want to show that other control variables are continuous at the cutoff point and the way we do that is we first create this variable called i'll just call it fs um, and what it is is it's the running variable minus the cutoff point so just going to create that as a variable inside the wages data set and then what we do is we run regressions for other ind continuous independent variables regressed on the eligibility variable and this fs variable and what we're looking for is whether or not the eligibility variable is significant. It shouldn't be. So let's just run a bunch of these. We're just trying to validate. Okay, eligibility variable, not significant. All right, experience. It's another continuous control variable, not significant. All right, education. All right, let's see. Not significant. Or actually, I should have been highlighting over here. Not significant. So uh, this supports uh, assumption number one. Okay. All right, assumption number two deals with whether or not there is sorting around the cutoff. The idea there is um, regression discontinuity is not going to work if people kind of self-decide whether or not they're going to be eligible. The whole idea here is, is that we want to give the program to those that make less than $30 an hour. Well, if some people who make $31 an hour are like, hey, you know, lower my wages so that I can get this program, uh, they might switch from earning $31 an hour to $29 an hour. Um, and if that happens, then, then that's going to invalidate the assumptions of the regression discontinuity. Basically, that's going to say that people that are just above the threshold and people that are just below the threshold are going to be different. They're going to be systematically different. So to validate that, what I'll do is I'll generate a, a, a histogram of the wage variable. It, it, so in this case, wage variable, uh, the running variable. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to kind of zoom in on the cutoff point to see if I have any evidence for some strong, um, for some strong sorting across that uh, eligibility threshold. Now, what I do in R is I'm going to use this ggplotly command. Actually, we installed this plotly package. Um, earlier and what that's going to do is it's going to produce a graph um, that I can um, I can kind of move around uh, just by clicking on it. it's a pretty cool command actually uh, and so it just kind of makes this process neat uh, so we want to zoom in on this $30 uh, per hour so I'm going to zoom in here so here, so this is the wage 28. Uh, so at, in this bin, uh, so in this bin, we've got 28.6 um, dollars per hour. In this bin, 31.23 dollars per hour. So really, it's comparing these two that matter. And when we look at this, you know, this one's a little bit higher than this one, but this is really tiny. This is a very tiny comparison. Um, when I look at this, I would say that there's very little evidence uh, for that type of sorting, the type of sorting that would invalidate this. So this looks good to me. Uh, I'm going to move on to running the model. Okay, so here, let's implement our first regression discontinuity model. Um, now, earlier, we had a scatter plot. Maybe I'll just throw that scatter plot up uh, one more time just so we can um, keep an eye on it. So... Um, 
when we run our model, well, you know, basically what we need to do is we need to have our dependent variable, and then we need to regress it on the eligibility variable and the running variable. But now this depends on the um, this depends on the shape of the relationship between the running variable and the outcome variable. Okay, so the nature of that relationship. Sorry. Oh, here we go. This is where I need. All right. Okay, and so we said, hey, look, there's a little bit of a nonlinear relationship here, so why don't we include a, uh, a squared term as well? So I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to include wage squared as well. All right, so I'll just run this model, and our, we'll be identifying our treatment effect using the coefficient on that E1 variable. Okay, let's see. Oh, I forgot to actually generate the wage squared. So here we go. All right, so we can see E1, it is statistically significant. Um, we validated our assumptions, so we feel strongly making a, a causal interpretation here. So I would say that study time increases by 4.6 hours um, when a family receives the unconditional cash transfer. Or I might put it differently to really emphasize the causality and say that the unconditional cash transfer causes a 4.6 hour increase in children's time spent studying. Okay, so here we go. That's example number one. Let's do example number two. So example number two is another kind of uh, another scenario here. We're saying that um, the government is trying to raise people's wages, so they want to equip people with better skills to help them to raise their wages. Uh, and the way they're doing it is they're saying that anyone who has less than 12 years of education is eligible for this training. And they want to see, does this training cause an increase in wages? Okay, so in this scenario, wage is the outcome variable and education is the running variable. So let's do a scatter plot good idea for this relationship. Okay, so here's our scatter plot. Um, oh, I put it in the wrong order real quick. I want to put that wage on the um, put, put that the outcome variable on the y axis and education or the running variable on the x axis. So here we go. We're looking at 12. So 12 is about here. We're so again, we're looking is there any evidence of a discontinuity? And we're looking for what's the general shape of the relationship between the outcome variable and the running variable. Uh, looking at 12, it's really not clear if there's a shift. Maybe there's a shift, um, but it's, it's hard to see. That doesn't bode well for us. Um, okay, looking at the shape, this looks linear to me. So I'm just going to assume that this is a linear relationship. Okay, all right, next step, generating the eligibility variable. I'll do that. The eligibility variable, call that E2 here, um, equals 1 if they have less than 12 years of education and 0 otherwise. We're going to check for sharp versus fuzzy regression discontinuity. We can see here that there are people that got the training who were not eligible, and there were people who were eligible but did not get the training. So this is fuzzy regression discontinuity here. We're going to need to use fuzzy regression discontinuity. Okay, validating the assumptions. Um, so I'll just go through this very quickly here. We got to, you know, create our FS variable and then, and then, oh, okay. We actually shouldn't include education here because that is the running variable. That doesn't make sense. So let's just look at these. Okay, so here we go. Insignificant and insignificant. All right, that's a good sign. That supports assumption one. Okay, so let's try to validate assumption number two. So what we're going to do is generate a histogram. This time I'm going to specify the number of bins. It's just going to make the, the visual uh, a little bit clear. Um, okay. Oh, whoops. Bins. Okay, so here we go. Um, I can zoom in on it if we need to. So 12 is going to be right around here. It does look... Honestly, because this is like right before 12, it looks like there could be some discontinuity here. I don't know if that discontinuity would be because of intentional sorting uh, based on the training. But see, here's the problem. So this, pro this program is being implemented based on education level, and it's using 12 years of education as its cutoff. And 12 years of education, that's graduation from high school. 
the people that haven't graduated from high school are probably going to be very different from people that have graduated from high school. And so I'm not sure if this is really going to work. It does seem like there is quite a bit of a um, difference around that cutoff. So this might be problematic. So assumption two might not hold here. But let's just continue to... Um, Let's just let's just uh, kind of finish to show how to do this. Um, but I am concerned there are some red flags here that that assumption number two won't hold. Okay, so when we have fuzzy regression discontinuity, what we're going to do is we're going to use the E2 variable, that eligibility variable. We're going to use it as an instrumental variable. Okay, that means we're going to use IV reg. So um, we'll run the IV reg here. So basically, we put in the model wage regressed on uh, training. That's basically our treatment. We want to measure the impact of that. So regressed on training plus the running variable. So the running variable is education. Okay. And then we have this vertical bar. We have the running variable plus the IV, the instrumental variable. All right. So we're just going to run that, report the results. Okay. And so the coefficient that we're interested in here is the coefficient on the training variable. It has been instrumented. So really, even though it says training here, what it is is actually the predicted training value uh, from the first stage. Because remember, it's a two-stage least squares. So uh, if you need a refresher on IVs, go ahead and go back to the IV uh, regression uh, lecture. Um, now, I'd be tempted to interpret this causally, but the problem is, is that I don't think that assumption number two holds. And so I don't actually think that regression discontinuity um, is going to hold in this case. So I'm not going to I'm not going to interpret that. I don't think the method works for this, but I wanted to show how to do it. Okay, great. I hope everyone enjoyed the lecture and I'll see you next time.